Well hello and congratulations on a positive pregnancy result. Oh my goodness, there is so much information to give you. So many things that you'll want to know, need to know, so many questions that you'll have. Now I'm not about to answer all of them in this one short segment, but I want to run you through just some of the basic recommendations on blood and urine testing for all women in pregnancy. What are some of the special tests that we might do for women at particular risk? And then we'll move on later to the ultrasound scanning in pregnancy. If you're newly pregnant, we'd like to run a routine antenatal screen. This is comprised of a number of blood tests as well as a urine test. So to start with, it's very important that we know what your blood type is and if you have any antibodies against other blood types. For most of the Australian population, we are rhesus positive. That means our blood type, be it A, B, AB or O, will be followed by a positive rather than a negative. This is important because rhesus negative women carry a risk of developing antibodies against positive blood types that can harm usually a future pregnancy. So we want to check and see what is your blood type? Are you positive or negative? We also like to check and see your blood count result. We are particularly looking here to see if you have anemia or any issues that might arise with your white cell or platelet count. If you are anemic or if your red cells look either too big or too little, that might be a clue for us to look a little bit deeper to check things such as your iron stores or your B12 level. It can also be a reason why we might screen you and your partner for conditions such as thalassemia. Moving on from the full blood count and blood group and antibodies, we also like to check your infectious disease status with your permission. In particular, we are looking for signs that you might carry and be at risk passing on to your child, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, and syphilis. Now these are all quite uncommon conditions but they're very important both for you and for your unborn child. So we would want to identify them early and give you specialist advice about how best to take care of yourself and to reduce the risk to your child. In addition, we want to know if you are immune to rubella. Most women who have been born and raised in Australia and in fact most women throughout the world will have been given a rubella vaccination as part of their childhood immunizations and this will usually protect you for your whole life and reduce the chances that you could acquire and pass on to your child rubella which unfortunately can cause a number of congenital anomalies. For women who don't have a good history of having had chickenpox as a child or who have not had two chickenpox immunizations, we would also want to check to see if you are immune to chickenpox because this can be important should you have contact with somebody with chickenpox or with shingles during your pregnancy. Apart from those blood tests, we also like to do a urine test, not to confirm your pregnancy, although we may wish to do that as well, but specifically to look to see if there's any sign of kidney disease, underlying kidney disease, or any signs of infection. Unfortunately, during pregnancy, it is possible to have an infection and not be aware of it, and that places a woman at a higher risk for the infection traveling to her kidneys and making her very sick. Once we've checked these essentials, we also apply our minds to the individual woman. Are there reasons why, for example, we might want to check her sugar in case she has undiagnosed diabetes? We might want to check her liver and kidney function tests, sometimes because we're concerned there may be underlying disease, or sometimes because she's at risk because of her personal or family history of developing things such as high blood pressure during pregnancy, and it's nice to have a baseline set of bloods that tell us if any problems were present at the beginning of her pregnancy. As mentioned before, we might also check B12 and iron stores, and this would extend to women, for example, who are vegetarians or vegans or who simply do not have much red meat in their diet 
or who have a history of regular blood donations. Thyroid is another condition we would commonly screen for, but again, not routinely in every woman, although guidelines vary across the nation and indeed across the world. Women who are at high risk include older women, that is older than 30, women who have a family history of thyroid disease, women who have a personal or family history of celiac disease, or women who simply have symptoms of thyroid disorder. So those are the essential bloods that we would really look to do in most women. As to the ultrasound scans, that's a whole topic in itself. If a woman is uncertain about when she fell pregnant, then we would want to get a dating scan. If there is early bleeding or bleeding and pain in pregnancy, we might want to check a viability scan and exclude an ectopic pregnancy. A nuchal translucency scan will also give us information more than just about the chromosomes, also about the anatomy of the child. And this is done usually between 12 and 13 weeks of pregnancy. A morphology scan at 18 to 22 weeks of pregnancy would round out the routine checks that we would typically do. Unfortunately, while the standard antenatal screen is covered under Medicare funding, most of the ultrasound scans will involve some out-of-pocket expense for most women, and this can be very easily $150 to $200 per scan that a woman will have to pay in addition to the Medicare rebate. Please do discuss your personal and family history with your maternity carer, be that your midwife, your GP or your obstetrician, so that they can help to inform you and advise as to what would be appropriate testing for you. Thank you.